before the initiation and titration trial, I personally actually put people on TID all the time. I thought TID was better than BID. You're going to buy the insulin, why not give it three times a day? So one of the really fun things about the trial is it completely proved me wrong. Uh, BID worked just as well as TID. Now that doesn't mean you have to start BID, it's up to you as a clinician. Personally, BID had the same A1C reduction, uh, measures of compliance and disease state burden and injection discomfort. Um, actually, some of these were better with BID than TID. So I start out with BID with most of my patients. Uh, we split 60% in the morning and 40% in the evening. Remember to do your 20% dose reduction if the A1C is 8% or lower. If you opt to go for the TID dose, you, you get 40% in the morning, 30% at lunchtime, and 30% with the evening meal. So take the total dose, if need be reduced by 20%, then split it according to those ratios, and then you can titrate the insulin afterwards. It was heartening that at the end of the trial, the ratio of insulin between the different injections was very similar to what we used at the time of initiation. And that does validate that these are reasonable starting points. An individual patient may vary quite a bit at the end of, a, of the study period, but on the average, that looked to be a good way of splitting up the insulin. Patients should be encouraged to check their sugar four times a day. If the dose is increased, we also recommend doing a reading at three o'clock in the morning to make sure they're not getting nocturnal hypoglycemia. If you're adjusting a three-day injection protocol, you're going to be adjusting your breakfast insulin based on the lunchtime blood sugar, the lunchtime insulin based on the evening meal blood sugar, and then the evening dose based on the breakfast blood sugar the next day. That being said, if you had hypoglycemia at three o'clock in the morning or bedtime, that evening dose would be reduced even if the morning blood sugar was high. If you're adjusting a twice a day regimen, you're going to adjust the evening dose just like you did with TID, but the breakfast dose will be adjusted based on the evening meal blood sugar, but somewhat analogous to what happened with TID. If you go low at lunchtime, that's going to call for a dose reduction even if you're high at the evening meal. So what we did is we looked at the median blood sugar for the previous three days and used that to adjust the therapy. The target blood sugar, which was taken from the ADA guidance at the time, was from 71 to 130. If they were 70 or lower, there was a 10% reduction in the dose of insulin. If it was 131 to 180, a 5% increase, 181 to 220, a 10% increase, above 220, a 15% increase. We used a percent change of insulin because these patients are on widely various doses of insulin. They're on at least 200 units, but some patients could be on as much as 600 units. So it makes a lot more sense to, to do a percent change than an absolute change. When I start U500, as I said before, I pick the dose initially based on what the A1C is and converting those patients from the U100 insulin to just U500. I tell patients to take it 30 minutes before the meal. I use it twice a day only. In the study, they compared twice a day, which is three times a day, and they both had the same A1C reduction. I tell patients that in the initial few months, they may gain little weight. That's always a cost to pay uh, for doing well on insulin, and that's typical of all insulins. When you start insulin and your sugars come down, you may gain some weight, but that will stabilize over time. And in those patients on U500, it's unlikely to see severe hypoglycemic events because they have such a severe insulin resistance to start with. But of course, when the sugars start to come down, the A1C gets better. That's when we might see more hypoglycemic events. But the key is to take that insulin 30 minutes before they eat. That's one way they could prevent hypoglycemia. And of course, we tell patients to eat three meals a day, have small snack at bedtime, like with any patients on insulin, and also give them tips on how to prevent hypoglycemia if they are active, if they are sick, not eating. Uh, of course, we tell them, call us anytime if you're not sure what to do. And if they do become hypoglycemic, on how to treat it correctly. The, the U500 pen is just as available as the vials are. So because it's so much safer, easier for the patient compliance wise, I would urge you to use the U500 pen. But be careful, 
neither the vial or pen may not always be in the pharmacy. So a good way of starting the patient is taking that into consideration. If you're not sure if your pharmacy carries it, the patient needs to be aware of it. Uh, so they don't go there thinking they're going to get their first injection tonight and the insulin's not available to them. Another issue about pens is there are patients out there that just have visual and motor issues that make it difficult to give insulin with vial and syringe. So if you're considering a vial and syringe with any insulin therapy on a patient, make sure the patient can draw that insulin and give it accurately. It's funny to think that in a hospital ward we have two registered nurses looking carefully at an insulin dose given with a syringe, but we send Mrs. Smith home who's 80 years old and half blind with arthritis with a prescription for a vial and syringe and assume that she's going to do it properly. In an endocrine practice, we've been using U500 my entire career, which is more as long as it's been on the market, and feeling very comfortable with it. But the confusion has always been in the dosing. So we've had to use either a U100 syringe and do a lot of mathematic conversions, or a TB syringe. And the concern always comes when the patient gets admitted to the hospital or someone else is managing their care, are they gonna do the math the same and writing the prescriptions to make sure they get the right amount of insulin? Well, now that we have both a dedicated pen and a dedicated syringe, you write the dose, the patient takes the dose, and it couldn't be easier. So now the patient can get the benefit of using this concentrated U500 insulin, and for the healthcare provider, the comfort level of the dosing is much easier um, and the, the conversation from the healthcare provider to the patient, to the pharmacist, to the hospital, anywhere the patient's going to be with a dedicated syringe and or a dedicated pen makes life so much easier to use this insulin.